I want to talk about Jimmy Garoppolo because um, I only ever criticize Jimmy Garoppolo. And when he has a bad game, I'm very harsh on him. But he played well last week, and he's had some good games this this year. And I think it would be informative just to take a step back at the bye week and look at what he's done this year. So uh, what, what's your impression of him before looking at stats? What's your impression okay. of what Jimmy's done this year? Okay, so but we will look at stats. Yes, we will. Okay. Um, when Jimmy is bad, Jimmy, and he does bad things, I'm very down on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I grew up, in a way, with – 49ers having some of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Right. And so that's my standard. And that's the 49ers standard. And judged by that standard, Jimmy is service. Not good enough. He falls short. He falls short. Okay. He falls he short. Falls short. Yeah. So I, I say that as context. He's never going to be Steve Young or Joe no. Montana. It's never going to happen. No. No, he might never be Jeff Garcia. Correct. Okay. But there are things I like about him. First of all, he really has guts. He really does. And when things go bad for him, he doesn't let it get him down. He perseveres. And it's something I tremendously admire. When you say guts, in terms of he'll he throw in, Iggy, he stands in and takes hits you wouldn't believe. That's true. He'll also throw uh, balls into very tight windows, as opposed to Alex Smith when 10 years ago when he would be like, mm, no, Alex can't throw that. So I like that. Yeah. Is, he's more of a risk taker, and you need mm-hmm. to. Alex was not enough of a risk taker. Although he, he wasn't enough, he risk. he got better as he got as, as he when he left the Niners when he and he played with Andy Reid. He figured it out. But yeah, you're right. Oh, but I also mean he has guts. He'll play if he's hurt, um, and he, Iggy he takes some shots. He'll stand there and throw the ball. It's not everybody who can do that. So I admire that about him. Within his limited scope as a quarterback meaning he's really not good on the deep pass. That's why they had Christian McCaffrey throw the deep ball. He's not that good at it. We know he's not that good outside the numbers. But in his area, he's excellent. I'd say in his area, he's excellent. And His little tennis court? His little tennis court? Yeah. Yeah, His little tennis court. His little tennis court? Yeah. Here's what I want to say. Yeah. Um, He's not a quarterback who'll take the 49ers on his back and win. But he has tremendous weapons. I think the limitation – this season more than him is Kyle and his yeah. play calling. And I think people out there should watch Kurt Warner's video, 30 minutes. And he, of course, he does criticize Jimmy, but he also praises him. But boy, does he go after Kyle and his his so-called system and concepts. So I want to say all in all this season, he has been a plus. Yeah, you know, I've always felt like, He's just not good enough. Whatever he is, he's not good enough to win a Super Bowl. And I kind of wrote off the Niners as soon as he became the starter. And I'm not saying I'm picking him to win the Super Bowl. But just stepping back and looking at Jimmy's season right now, I mean, he's seventh in quarterback rating. And I'm not saying he's improved. He has not improved as a quarterback. He's We've seen him. But he has better weapons around him. He has Christian McCaffrey now. He has Brandon Ayuk's improving. The situation around him on offense is is improving and he benefits from that and if he can maintain this level of production the one thing he has improved on is the interceptions he only has four so far this season if he can keep that up I think it's fair to say that he's not going to be the limiting factor I mean he is a limiting factor but he's not going to be so limited that they can't win a Super Bowl it seems like he's playing at a good enough level right now I agree now, I mean, they just got smashed by the Chiefs. I'm not saying they can beat the Chiefs, but if the defense can come back and they can get healthy, I just don't think that you can write them off because Jimmy Garoppolo is a quarterback anymore. Also, Jimmy needs Jimmy specifically needs help on the right side of the offensive line. That is true. It's not like Jimmy's the weak link on the team. It's McGlinchey. No, he's yeah. not the weak link, and he is under pressure more than he should be. So yeah. he's got he's he's fighting against. Kyle's limitations. That's the thing. And please see the Warner video. And he's fighting against right McGlinchey's limitations, which are legion. Uh, so when he, he has a bad play, he didn't do well. But there's a lot else. There's a lot of else, resp- a lot of responsibility to go around. That's not only him. So I want to say, Iggy, I think you and I are giving him a bit of a thumbs up today. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying they should give him an extension. I'm not saying he's going to be in the Pro Bowl this year. But it does look like with Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, and Christian McCaffrey, he can perform more than well enough for this team to go deep in the playoffs 
And if Kyle Shanahan can be the coach that he's supposed to be and be a genius, I think he's got more than enough. He doesn't have the greatest quarterback in the world, but he's got a quarterback who's experienced, knows his system, and has a lot of complimentary weapons around him. So I think it's on Kyle. To me, he's been the, the weakest link in this offense so far, but he's got a he's got a whole second half of the season to come to the party. Iggy, I have a little exercise we can do. The four starting quarterbacks in the NFC West, let's rate them bottom to top. Who's mm-hmm. the worst? I know who I think. May yeah. I say? Go ahead. You're going to say Kyler. Currently, I'm going to say Kyler. Matthew Stafford at the bottom. Stafford. You don't like that? It's hard to say because Stafford has no offensive line, no running game, and no deep threats. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jimmy's got everything around him right now except for a right tackle and a coach. Okay, let me say yeah, that. Fair enough. I understand the excuses that Stafford has, but given his reality, he's he's not performing all that well. Let me ask you another – let me put it, put it another way. Let's put it another way. Who would you rather have as the Niners quarterback, Jimmy or Matthew Stafford? Okay, I understand. See what I'm right saying? Now, no, wait. I would okay. rather have Jimmy. Why? Okay. I'm not sure Stafford's arm is okay. Fair. Plus, Stafford, under pressure, loses his cool just like Jared Goff did. Just like – yeah, it's true. I was going to say just like Jimmy, but even worse. And when he throws the pick, it's often uh, returned for a touchdown. I think he's thrown like 30 pick sixes in his career, which is just yeah. amazing. So, uh, it, you okay. Know, okay. Super Bowl champion. I put him number four. Okay. Who would you put three? <sighs> That's – okay. This may piss you off. I'm going to put the guy in Arizona, Kyler Murray. Kyler, okay. I would, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. When he operates at the top of his game, yeah. he's phenomenal. Yeah, he is. Yeah. The things about him, he strikes me as up and down and uh, sometimes does awful things, and he can't see over the line of scrimmage. So He's not having a good year either. He's not. No. That being said, he's better when he has DeAndre Hopkins, who just came back a couple of... But it, look, I, it's hard to disagree. I mean, the whole thing about him not doing his homework? Are you kidding me? That's not good. And no one's Jimmy, ever said that about Jimmy, you know? Jimmy yeah. works his coach off. Yeah. And what's more, the, the, his players like him. So you know what, Iggy? I'm putting him reluctantly at, at number two because I don't quite believe in Geno Smith. But I got to give Geno his props. So, I got to give Geno his props, too. Gino's yeah, number one right and now. And I, I got to give uh, Pete Carroll, who I thought the league had passed him by, I got to give him his props. So I'm saying right now, Jimmy is the second best quarterback in the NFC West. And and for some miracle, Geno Smith is currently functioning the best. Now, okay. people say, how could you say that? Stafford, but I'm saying how they're functioning today. That's fair. I, look, I just want to say that I'm a little hesitant to give Jimmy that much credit because I know he just beat the Rams, and it's great, and we're being generous because they're coming off a win, but it's the Rams, and he's done it a lot of times, and he did lose to the Falcons and the Broncos, which were rough. So ah, ah, I, I, we'll see a little bit more. I don't want to get head over heels, but it's fair to point out that Kyler and Stafford are having really bad years, really yeah. bad years, statistically way worse than Jimmy Garoppolo. And I think it's fair to point out, Grant, that we are not haters. We're not haters. In fact, we're big Jimmy Garoppolo fans. The only reason that we're giving Jimmy this much credit is because he shouted me out in the press conference and said my name in the locker room last week. So now I'm officially just a big Jimmy Garoppolo fan. I'm getting his jersey. Now, look, I want to say something. If I were covering the team, and this is a total hypothetical, of course, what I used to do, what I would get to know certain players, and I would write profiles of them. Mm -hmm. So who would I like to write about on this team? Jimmy Ward would be number one. Yeah. I mean, ha- he's irresistible. Mm-hmm. I would like to talk to Jimmy Garoppolo, and I think I could get something out of him. I think there's a Jimmy in there, aside from the smile and the bland answers. Uh, Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You said bland answers. Not recently. That's like 20s Jimmy. 30s Jimmy gives great answers. Great right. answers. Yeah. I know. I think it actually might be easy, that, that, that uh, interview. might be fun. He has a lot to say. Other ones I'd like to talk to. I would love to talk to Ken I think who? Ken Law. Oh, yeah. I would oh, yeah. love to get to know oh, him. Yeah. I think there's oh, a yeah. real person in Ken Law. And, um, oh, I yeah. Think, uh, that could come out. Uh, people that would not interest me. 
Real um, quick before we move on from Kinlaw, one of the things I like about him, he's so authentic. He's everything is right on his sleeve, right yes, there. I, I love like that. Him. As opposed like to some people, you're like, uh, is that is what you're projecting really you? You know what I'm talking about with some athletes? That's not Javon Kinlaw. I like a play a guy like that. People who wouldn't particularly interest me, Armstead. For the reason I just said. Exactly. For the I, reason I, I just he, said. He's pre-programmed from right. what I can tell. Right. And also the, the right tackle. Pre-programmed. Oh, yeah. That's what yeah. I feel. Anyway, yeah. those are five guys off the top of my head. Yeah, because you know if you get the pre-programmed guy, you can't get him off their script. You cannot. No. Now, um, I was uh, doing something yesterday for a class at Morehouse College, uh, Journals of Class, with my friend Ron Thomas who used to be at the Chronicle. I'm doing something for that class next next month. Shout out oh, Morehouse. It's wonderful. Yep. Anyway, Ron reminded me, and Iggy, I forgot this. When Joe Montana was playing, and he was so great, it was after a game. No, it was Friday. They used to – the Ron said the quarterbacks used to talk on Friday, not Wednesday. Oh. So we had Joe on Friday, and, you know, Joe was giving the most bland answers. <laughs> so I remember this. Ron said I stopped the news conference and said, Joe, you can do better than that. You did that? That's what Ron said I did. Wow, and I Joe believe it. And responded and did. I believe it. When they you know, give those answers, you can't allow it. You have no. to call him out politely on it. You know, uh, Joe Montana spoke before the game against the Chiefs a couple weeks ago, and we didn't know he was coming. They just brought him in, and we weren't prepared, but I was listening to his answers. I put it on my YouTube. Those were the blandest answers I've ever heard of all time. And I was thinking, man, this guy has no real social confidence. Like, he's his voice is getting quieter and quieter by the by the moment. It's like he was shrinking. It was so strange to see the greatest quarterback of all time really kind of just sit there like, yeah, hey, I guys, know. how's it going? Like Steve Young has this whole thing. Joe doesn't have it. It's crazy. No, Joe had it on the field. Right. Yeah, that's amazing. Off switch. On yeah. the field, he turned the switch on. Off he tur- the field, he turned it off. But Joe, if you see this, I don't want you to think I'm putting you down. I think Joe has a lovely personality. I think there's a lot more depth than you can just get in casual conversation. Um, I, I, and I think this is very, I think Joe is shy. That's what I was going to say. He comes think, across as shy. I, I wasn't think, trying to put him down. He just comes yeah. across as shockingly shy for the greatest quarterback of all time. Yes. And, and I think it's charming. Yeah, it is. It is. It it's is. charming. When Absolutely. I see Joe, now he'll never use my name. He never says hello, hello, but he'll say hello. And when I see Joe, I'm always happy to see him. Because there aren't that many quarterbacks who you would call shy. Jimmy isn't shy. Trey isn't shy. Steve wasn't shy. Colin wasn't shy. Alex wasn't shy. They're all very like... Alex was like a corporate executive. Exact. Not shy. Very polished. I mean, Joe is like, oh, shucks. How did I end up here? Man, I could have been doing nothing or playing baseball or... Whoa. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Yes. 